application will have we we will have three speakers uh, this morning speaking on different topics concerning uh, studies on education, uh, and I'm very pleased to introduce our very uh, first speaker, uh, Nicola Cantaloni, who is uh, from CERN, that is uh, Sweden's Emilia Romagna Network here in Italy. On site, we have Nicola today. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, he's speaking on developing long-term mobility programs for upper secondary students through Erasmus Plus challenges and opportunities. Uh, welcome and look forward to hearing what you have to say today. Thank, thank you. you very much. So thank you very much. And uh, thanks uh, for, for having me here. Um, okay, so I will be speaking essentially about this uh, experience that uh, we are um, doing in the framework of uh, Erasmus. Uh, as Mark was saying, I uh, direct the network of uh, Italian and Swedish local authorities and over the years we've been involved in uh, a number of um, uh, transnational activities because our aim is that of uh, making, making local authorities and public authorities, in particular in the field of education, collaborating together. And um, we are now uh, in uh, the second year of uh, implementation of this um, initiative and i would like to tell you a little bit about experience we've had so far in that context so the paper uh, that we have um, uh, written together with uh, dr rossi okay uh, is focusing on two main uh, questions actually because the, the the actual project is the so let's say give us the opportunity to make some reflections about um, what's happening in europe in particular when it comes to uh, transnational cooperation in the field of uh, uh, upper secondary uh, education uh, both the ground uh, level, so what's happening uh, in terms of cooperation between uh, upper secondary schools and also more in general at European Union level, how, so to say, the policy processes are uh, evolving and also the strategic frameworks of the EU is also uh, evolving in that sense. So the paper starts off by uh, uh, illustrating um, uh, the policy context. I don't know. Of, how many of you are from the EU area, uh, but those that are not from uh, Europe uh, maybe don't know that uh, the European Union has uh, developed uh, a long-term strategic framework to, uh, to develop um, a common area of education. Uh, this has been the result of a process of cooperation which uh, started many years uh, ago in the field of education, but let's say that in particular, in the past uh, uh, years, uh, the focus has been more and more on uh, um, uh, promoting convergence between the different national education systems. Excuse me, Nicola, there's a technical issue. Yeah, we just need to sort out the screen. Sure. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's sorry, it's sorry, 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 online and not seeing the, yeah, the, the sharing, so, 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 yeah, it's good. Yeah. Oh. So, Okay, yeah. Sorry, everyone. Good. Apologies for that for the people who have joined us online. Okay, so the, the European education area is, of course, addressing several uh, uh, sectors of education, and the Erasmus Plus program is, the, say, the most uh, is, is the program through which the European Union is kind of putting into. Uh, uh, reality the con the the objectives that they have been developing at, uh, at policy level so um let's say that over the years uh, the different sectors have been uh, developing uh, activities in particular uh, higher education sector is the one uh, that has been uh, as you know historically maybe already Erasmus plus program began uh, in the 80s and 90s with the development of a joint program of cooperation between uh, uh, universities. Uh, but the other sectors have been lagging behind. Uh, in particular, uh, the school sector, let's say, has uh, been at the center of uh, the attention of the European Commission more and more over the years. 
Um, of course, there has been cooperation developed also in the school sector through uh, cooperation in projects, uh, mobility for staff, uh, and also mobility for pupils. But what we have been observing is that the mobility of uh, pupils has been mainly, and still is to a great extent today, mainly focusing on short-term mobility. So this means uh, short uh, study trips uh, that are involving classes and so on. So we are not talking about uh, uh, long long term mobility of students, meaning uh, long uh, periods of time, long meaning three to 12 months uh, spent in another uh, school abroad in the European Union at least. Uh, only 0.4% uh, of the total mobilities in Europe uh, in, in the period between 1218 to 2020 have been uh, long-term So you understand that we're talking really about only a few uh, dozens of uh, uh, mobilities over uh, more than, I think, 10,000 mobilities. Uh, so if you look at the uh, uh, actual, uh, the, this is the, the sort of say the general picture at European uh, Union level. Uh, so now there is a stronger uh, attention to uh, foster cooperation in the school sector, cooperation between uh, schools, also in relation to um, uh, long-term mobility. There's been a campaign running at European Union level, uh, and there is a lot of attention also if you look at the uh, uh, national agencies that are running uh, the Erasmus Plus program, and uh, there's been a stronger focus and attention in promoting this kind of activities. Uh, in the context of the project that we are coordinating, we are running, uh, the three schools also uh, show uh, a good kind of example of what's the situation when it comes to uh, upper secondary schools and the reasons maybe why also they are not doing this kind of long-term mobilities. So first of all, let's say, as I mentioned earlier, that the pri uh, priority is given to short-term mobility uh, because it's the easiest and that those that have been more uh, accustomed to, uh, to do in terms of transnational activities or cooperation. So kind of twinning between schools where you have study trips of a week and the students meet, and uh, maybe you have also some lessons together, but that's it, essentially. So we're not going beyond that idea. Uh, and this is and this has been running for maybe years, uh, even without the support of the European Union. Uh, then at the same time, there is another phenomenon which has been emerging, and it actually has been there for also quite a number of years, which is that the students, um, there are students that are willing to make an experience abroad in the United States, maybe overseas, uh, Australia or uh, other countries, from Italy, from any other countries also in Europe. There are organizations that are actually uh, dedicated to this kind of activity. But there is a problem that is connected to also to what the, the students learn when they are abroad during these kind of activities. Uh, there is maybe a formal recognition of the period abroad, but there is a, a, a huge issue con concerning uh, uh, what they are learning, uh, the contents, and the way in which also they are assessed. And therefore, then when they come back, in some cases, in some countries, there is mm, they lose completely the school year if they stay away for one year, or uh, they have uh, issues in related to in relation to. Uh, uh, recovering what they have lost during the year, in a sense, because the homeschool is really uh, looking into also the contents and, uh, and how the experience has been in line with uh, the uh, objectives of the national uh, curriculum. Um, yes, this is also another element uh, that I was mentioning already. So. <laughs> Um, there is difference also in the in the way uh, the experience is this currently is recognized in different countries so some countries are more open like Italy it's probably in Europe the country that is technically more open to recognize the uh, at least formally the the period spent abroad and uh, in our project we have also Sweden which is part of the partnership and that's the country instead of the most restrictive when it comes to uh, recognition of the study periods abroad. You know, so we have the two extremes, not to say, in the same context. Um, so 
we started from this uh, kind of uh, situation and uh, we have developed this, uh, we're running this project, which uh, starts from the need of putting, first of all, the school at the center of the process. So we're trying to focus very much on um, uh, making sure that the school is, uh, acquires capacity to run these kind of activities, uh, but also uh, it does it in, uh, in a new way. Uh, so the DITS project uh, has, uh, as I told you, uh, three, 36 months uh, time uh, span of uh, implementation. It started in September 20, uh, 2020 and it will end next year. And it has five partners from four countries. It's uh, Italy, Sweden, Spain and, and uh, Cyprus. So what we are trying to do is to uh, um, align the national curriculum of the partner organization through uh, the development of a joint uh, study program, study plan. So the schools are fully involved in the development of a 12 week study plan that is designed together. Uh, the teachers are fully involved in that. Uh, a second aspect or second objective, let's say, of the project is that of uh, sharing and developing a consistent uh, set of assessment procedures uh, in order to assess the competencies and skills acquired during the, uh, during the, the period abroad. There will be actually a testing phase, so we will actually run uh, this uh, uh, three months uh, testing phase in January. Uh, there will be also, we are developed, we have developed already a package of administrative and organizational procedures to ensure that the whole program is actually uh, implemented effectively. Also bridging the, the gaps between the different uh, uh, school systems in, in terms of organization and the way in which the, uh, the school is actually up involved and uh, uh, organized around uh, these uh, activities. And in terms of uh, uh, outgoing mobilities and incoming mobilities, of course, because it will be uh, reci reciprocal. There will be still individual mobilities, but it will be reciprocal. So there will be students going and coming in. Um, and then we will develop an online uh, training uh, set uh, of tools uh, for teachers in order to be able to address more effectively in the future also this kind of uh, uh, initiatives. So what have been the challenges, some reflections about the challenges that we've been uh, addressing or that have been kind of emerging also during the, this first uh, two years of, um, of the project. Um, some problems in aligning the local programs in certain subjects. So eight subjects have been identified. Uh, we are talking about uh, schools, uh, upper general upper secondary schools, so Liceo Scientifico in Italian, uh, and um, in Sweden is a similar school, and in Spain also. Um, some problems have been emerging in aligning some of the subjects, in particular science and math, for others languages or uh, um, uh, uh, other subjects that's been uh, much easier. Um, we have tried to address the problem connected to uh, uh, the subjects which were not covered, uh, which are not covered, and uh, this will be kind of addressed through distance learning. So also this will be an element, an uh, important element, which will try to ensure uh, uh, a kind of continuity in their uh, uh, learning in the process of learning uh, among uh, the students uh, concerning uh, all the subjects that they normally follow in the, their uh, in their schools so they will basically continue their uh, learning path uh, without interruptions that's of course one of the purposes behind uh, the initiative um and also some challenges have been emerging also in relation to the common assessment procedures, because in each country there are different ways to which uh, the teachers assess uh, students. Uh, so we will be focusing on uh, uh, competencies and skills, of course, uh, but uh, also the uh, assessment systems have been uh, uh, reviewed and uh, the, the teachers in each subject have agreed on a common way through which they uh, will uh, assess the, the, the students from the other school. 
And then also another important question is uh, the, to make sure that uh, there is uh, an involvement of the whole school. So also the colleagues of the, the teachers that have been most closely involved in the process. Uh, it's a, a big issue in the sense that uh, in order to make this whole uh, process work, you need to involve the whole uh, so say staff uh, of the school or many of the colleagues also that are not directly involved but need to be uh, made aware of the process, make sure that uh, all the components of the schools are on board in, in order to make sure that the actual uh, process uh, works. So some uh, uh, conclusions, some more general conclusions, also not only on the, on the negative side or the more challenging elements that have emerged of the, in, during the process, but also some interesting uh, maybe reflections for uh, for the future because this kind of cooperation is actually uh, setting the ground for more ambitious initiatives that can come up in the future uh, first of all i think this can be a, a new way through which uh, introducing more structurally um, a european dimension in the daily work of upper secondary schools so that's uh, Schools are still very much linked to uh, what's happening inside the school. Uh, there are international activities, but they are not kind of something which is structurally in, uh, so to say, in integrated in the school work, or um, at least that's uh, the situation so far. This kind of approach uh, opens up opportunities in that sense. Uh, second, I would say also in the future, there can be as it, as it happened for the cooperation between uh, the universities, also in perspective, also upper secondary schools will have the possibility to develop a joint study program uh, where you will create international classes uh, like you have nowadays with uh, masters at master's level, where you have joint degrees also. There are of course some experiences, but they are absolutely marginal and not, uh, and not not yet at that level. So in perspective, uh, this can be also another interesting uh, development. And also in perspective, the, there is another interesting development, which will be, can be the collaboration with the European universities, which is now the new uh, kind of initiative of the European Union. And uh, the way in which uh, uh, the recruitment process for the European University is, is currently being developed also can be can create interesting synergies with initiatives like this because of course here we are talking about uh, developing cooperation between schools uh, that are basically will prepare students uh, in a different way uh, already with a different mindset uh, much more open to kind of international experiences and entering into uh, a context like the ones uh, offered by the European University, which is uh, fully transnational. So this uh, certainly, this kind of initiative can be uh, a basis, a good basis on which uh, building this kind of uh, future initiative. Of course, this will require on the, on the one hand, uh, uh, much work at organizational level when it comes to the schools, uh, because schools, upper secondary schools in Europe today are still to a great extent, um, not ready for these kind of initiatives. It's beginning, but it takes uh, it will take time. Uh, the presence of Erasmus students, meaning of students coming from other schools, is still uh, rather marginal. But in order to make this something more uh, structural, uh, they will have they will, we will need more. Uh, uh, a better organization at school level and certainly a new mindset uh, also among school staff. So new skills also for teachers, not only for students, uh, because you need teachers that are, need to be able to uh, interact with the, uh, a diverse uh, class potentially. So a multicultural class already in a approach also in a different way from the ones that uh, when we talk about talking about uh, multiculturalism in class, in the class, so of course today we're thinking mainly maybe about inclusion, but here we are talking more about uh, uh, really uh, facing a class uh, or addressing a class where you have uh, students coming from different countries. 
so it's um, in Europe. So in a in a different different way to approach the the class the teaching and also different way of uh, developing the learning process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. That was uh, that was fascinating. I you know nothing of this. So, uh, it's obviously been aware of exchange programs and other similar programs of that sort, but uh, this seems far more evolved. Now is an opportunity for delegates, uh, delegates online and here on site to 